it was pop and I'm here for something that I've been working on for a while now but I'm hoping you'll all find it most useful. So the merch campaign is over and I really appreciate all the support from everyone. I mean y'all support me anyways whenever you watch, like, and comment on the video but for those that went the extra mile to cop the merch, really just want to give y'all a shout out and say it truly means a lot. We got almost 300 sales which is amazing for the first merch drop. Wasn't the 500 which was the goal for Envy Week but I might have been a little ambitious there. Instead, I have another gift for you all. I'm gonna do my own little team building guide, Lord Envy Edition, so you know it's gonna be good, straight from my own mind. How to build a team around any Pokemon. The concepts here can easily apply to any generation or metagame. I'll just be using a Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl as sort of an example because it's super easy to showcase the fundamentals of team building in that gen. And when Gen 9 comes out, which we just got the announcement for, I can always update this guide with anything if need be. This is gonna be for single battles, 6v6, OU tier and all that good stuff. Think of team building as an art. You're painting a picture, brushing on some EV spreads, fitting all the pieces together like a puzzle, making the team look aesthetically pleasing to the eyes. Because trust me, when a team looks good, it plays good. Personally, I would consider myself someone who knows what they're doing when it comes to building some really fire teams in the game and having good success with them. And if you watch my videos, we can all probably agree on that. For anyone new watching this video, welcome. Hope you all stick around and subscribe as we are on the road to 100k. It really means a lot. Let me start off by saying I do believe in winning with your favorites like Elite Four member Karen does. I mean, I've done it myself. So in this video, I'll show you all how you can build a team around virtually any Pokemon and give you the tips and tricks you need to make it work, just like I do. This is all pretty much off the top of my head, by the way. So with that being said, if you feel like I've missed something important, leave a comment letting me know. I'm making this video where we can all share knowledge and experience and stuff together. So you know, leave a comment to support, ask a question or anything for that matter. The support is very much appreciated. Also, feel free to leave a comment and tell me which starter you like the most from the new Gen 9 games that were announced recently. Mine's definitely gotta be Fue Coco. <laughs> so fire, so fire. But the other starters are really cool as well. Okay, so we're just gonna do everything in Pokemon Showdown's team builder, but before we get into it, I think a good prerequisite to start building your own teams is having at least some knowledge of the game from a competitive standpoint, if you don't already have that, that is. So actually, when I first started playing competitive, I never used to build my own teams. I just used other people's teams that have proven success on the ladder and learn that way. And then when I felt comfortable enough to start making my own teams, I do a lot of trial and error to see what worked and what didn't. And I think that's really how you learn best. Though at least here I'll try to give you some sort of direction. Um, so if you don't know what each Pokemon does or what their roles are in the game, highly recommend checking out the um, Smogon competitive pages because it shows you the best way each Pokemon are run. So just to give you an example of how that works, I'm in a sort of a blank team builder right here. Let's just add a random Pokemon. Uh, maybe like... I don't know, Breloom. And then you click on the stats here, you'll see like a analysis page for it. You can click on that. And then you have here, um, I guess they do have some analysis for BDSPO, you just the sets and stuff. Some of them don't have it, some of them do, I guess. But you can see how the Pokemon was run throughout the generations or whatever generation you're trying to build for. Like you can kind of see how it works. Like for instance, um, in black and white, I know this uh, Toxic Orb set was pretty common. I know Sub Punch is really common, of course the um, Choice Band, one of my favorite sets on Breloom. So you'll get an idea of how each Pokemon are run by that. You can also click on this Pokemon tab here, and when you do that, you'll be able to uh, see, I guess, any Pokemon. So let's, let's say, for instance, you run into a, I don't know, Entei, for example. You see you see an Entei, and then you just go to see what the, what the sets are being run for this Pokemon. And Choice Band is a really common one, yeah, of course. And... That's kind of how you learn, right? That's kind of how you learn of what each Pokemon does competitively, what their sets are, what, what kind of what, what kind of things you can expect. And of course, there are sets that are not listed here. For instance, a lot of sets that I run <laughs> are not listed on here. So that's how you learn. You, you just got to keep adding to your knowledge of, um, you know, what what you know. And, and and this is kind of a good a good starting point in how to know these kinds of things. But looking at each generation uh, can give you an idea of the specific role that each Pokemon plays. You should also be aware of speed tiers. Um, speed tiers, what Pokemon are faster and slower than others. Um, team building is not just about covering weaknesses in a type chart. It's also, there's, a, there's another layer to it. It's about ensuring that you can deal with the most number of Pokemon possible in a given tier with their commonly seen movesets. A team can't deal with every single one of them, so your goal is to minimize the number of holes to your team. Minimize the number of Pokemon that can be really threatening. And that's how you really win most of your matchups, I would say, is to try to maximize the amount of things that you can cover with a team and just minimize the holes in your team as well. 
I'll break this video into a few sections. Firstly, I'm going to briefly cover all the playstyles in which you can base your team around. Then I will tell you how to EV your Pokemon, including using Chinese EV spreads, which I'll explain the definition of as well, so it isn't taken out of context. And the last section is going to take that knowledge that we learned and apply it to building a team around any Pokemon in the game just like I do. As always though, keep in mind, testing a team thoroughly is important if you want to perfect it as much as possible and feel comfortable using it. Just like, you know, for example, how I basically test a lot and then when I'm recording and stuff, I get like these win streaks and I just destroy opponent after opponent through a lot of testing. I don't just take a team and, and roll with it. I have to I have to make it good. Like I have, I have my, my team standards, of course. Oftentimes when I build a team at first, it does not end up looking the same way after testing because I tweak things based on the opposing Pokemon I find troublesome. But the general concept of how you go about building certain teams are all going to be the same, pretty much. I should also note that in Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, hazards are incredible. Like Stealth Rocks, probably the best thing in this um, in this format here. Like you also got Spikes, Sticky Webs, Toxic Spikes, they're all your best friends because this is a generation without heavy duty boots. It's an item that you only see in Gen 8 Sword and Shield. So if you're building in Sword and Shield OU or something, if you're building a, a team in, in Sword and Shield, Heavy Duty Boots is an item that you'll definitely um, find most useful in a lot of different scenarios. Gives you the ability to switch into hazards without taking any damage or getting any negative effects. Um, sometimes, even in like regular Gen 8 Sword and Shield, I'd not even keep rocks on a team because Heavy Duty Boots would just ignore them anyways. Here, there's nothing like that, so Stealth Rocks are incredible. But other hazards are optional depending on what kind of team you make. But why are they important? When your opponent switches in to take damage, it can turn certain two hit KOs into one hit KOs, or it can turn like three hit KOs into two hit KOs, making damage rolls in your favor. It can also break focus sash, sturdy, multi-scale, etc. So it's incredibly important in a generation without heavy duty boots. Now, because I say hazards are incredible, you should also know what else is incredible to keep your team um, free of those things. You gotta, you gotta be able to combat hazards, and that is hazard removal through defog or rapid spin. So, even like magic bounce, which is another good one. Um, so like I know Zatu has it, Espeon has it in this uh, generation. Um, magic bounce. Let's see here. Yeah, a Hatterene in um, Sword and Chill is another great magic bounce user as well. Magic bounce is a more sort of aggressive way or an aggressive option of balancing back hazards it's, it's a great way of like deterring them I should say keeping your opponent on their toes so that they try not to click it when they know that it can just be sent back to their side um, of course you know defog is probably one of the best ways of removing hazards because you know you don't have to worry about getting blocked by ghost types even though Gengar is banned of course so you know defog's nice it can get taunted there are ways of like shutting shutting down these things like you can have mold breaker go through the magic bounce you could have, um, or like skill swap or something, you could have, um, I guess, the ghost type to block rapid spin, or the taunter to block defog or something like that. And of course, like, there was also um, Landorus in Gen 8 running Imprison to prevent Pokemon from clicking defog or maybe like Imprison Rocks or something with like Earthquake and, and things so that they can't run the same moveset. <laughs> That's another option there as well. So like, they're, they're very important. Like, they're equally as important in this game though in, in, in um, Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl as it is to remove them. So the first playstyle I'll talk about is Balance. It's essentially a fairly even mix of offensive Pokemon and walls. All you gotta do is give yourself a physical wall, a specially defensive wall, physical attacker, special attacker, you know just gotta like kinda balance it out a little bit, maybe a choice scarf Pokemon and some speed control, and um, perhaps an additional support mon in the last slot or something with a bulky attacker role wall breaker role depending on what your team needs there's sort of a fine line between what is considered balance and what is considered semi stall because essentially they are the same thing just one is leaning more towards stall a bit but it still has more than one offensive component so it's not considered stall because they're both because i've heard both like that's a balance team or that's a semi stall team in the past and just one is leading more towards stall than the other so let's go ahead and take a look at the tier, see what we can find to make ourselves a balanced team. I might start with Dragonite maybe. Look at this, I mean Dragonite, really good physical attacker, right? And one way of like looking for a good physical attacker is clicking this attack thing here. Now it just organizes everything by stat, by attack stat. It's filtering by this. 
Dragonite's up there for sure. Let's go with that. Um, special attacker, maybe? Heatran. Nice, Dragonite. Heatran is a great core because Dragonite's immune to ground type attacks. Heatran takes the ice attacks and the dragon attacks and the fairy attacks. And, oh yeah, Dragonite also takes the fighting in the, the water and stuff too. Nice uh, weakness covering right here. And then Fizz Def Wall. Let's see, let's see what we got here. Physical defense. There's a lot of options here. Regenerator. Tangrowth this is nice. It's nice on this team. Maybe Spadef Wall. I'm kind of making it a little, little bit cookie cutter, I guess, just in terms of how to do it. But like, if you're just learning how to team build and stuff, this is like the way to go about it. And then of course, there's a lot of options. Blissey here. This kind of like has good synergy on a balanced team. Maybe, um, so like we have Stealth Rocks. We have, uh, I guess we're not running Defog on Dragonite. Maybe we go Defog on like Gliscor or something. Could, could work maybe. Nice balanced team. Let's get a wall breaker. You know what my one of my favorite wall breakers are? Crawdon. <laughs> Crawdon's a great wall breaker. Um, I have no idea if this team's going to work or not, but it probably will. And then you just have to test it. Find weaknesses, replace things here and there. Um, you know, that's how that's kind of how you go about making a balanced team. So like let's say I, you know, I wanted to make this maybe I don't know, choice band, multi-scale uh, with outrage, fire punch, earthquake and Extreme speed, just go with whatever this is. I like adamant better on band. So like that's an option. And then like this thing can easily run like, cause you're, you could just run, you could put rocks on this. You could put defog on this. This is of course gonna be like your life orb attacker or something. So you could switch up moves and stuff. Tangrowth is more like fizz def. And then this is more, I mean, because Blissey already has a high enough spidef, you don't have to go like this. Otherwise you just die to every physical attack. You go, you go like this still. You'll still sponge every special attack pretty much, except now you actually don't don't die in like one hit to like you're not a paper anymore on on the fizz def side. So you, you basically just have to like kind of EV it properly like that. And I'll I'll show you how to do more intricate EV spreads later on, of course. Um, so that's kind of how you make a balance team. That's kind of the process. You saw the process of how I went and made a balance team like this. I'm not gonna fill out everything just because um, it's easy to do that. You could also fill it. Out. Here's another way to fill it out, right? You just go um. You just click this, right? And then, is there, a, oh, there's a BDSP OU here. You click, um, which one do I want here? Maybe, maybe this one, or, yeah, you don't have to run what they say. You can always switch it up. And it's Flame Body here, I guess. So I, I never run Flame Body on my Heat Trends, but, you know, you could just do that. And then, because we're going to have Stealth Rocks here, we just replace this with, like, Earth Power for other Heat Trends, for example. Um, and we could also go Flash Fire as well if we want to <laughs> have a switch in. But that's kind of how you go about filling things out on a team. If you don't already know how to do it, that is. Actually, I'll just go ahead and fill up the rest of this stuff here. Why not? Um, yeah, so we, we just go with like, make sure you always pick your nature. You always want that nice, the nice little stat boost there. And then, you know, leftovers. Yeah, natural cure is fine. Seismic toss is probably the best thing on this thing. I like Thunder Wave. In generations other than Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, you can run Toxic over it. But it's not in this in this one, but it's still fine. Thunder Wave. Oops. I guess um since Gengar is gone, you could easily run something else in this slot in this slot here. Maybe like Actually what do they run now? Oh right, I forgot. <laughs> I don't even need to look at that. <laughs> counter. <laughs> I like I love counter on Blissey. Really, really solid. Here we could just run um leftovers Regenerator, I like four attacks the most. Giga Drain, Sludge Bomb, Knock Off, Earthquake. There's a mistake with this set here, you know what it is? Earth Power should be second. And Payback. It's like your standard set. I always love arranging the moves in a way. Stab move always on the top, but like Earth Power, it feels like it needs to be second. Payback third. Let's see here. I guess, uh, oh yeah, this thing, EV spread. Could just run it like this, I guess, is fine. Gliscor, I guess on this team, we could probably run it more spidef. Get like speed, for like T-Tar, 244, poison heal number. Something like that could work maybe. Is, uh, is potentially what can be done here. 
Earthquake. I like Ice Fang. U turn's good too. I might just go Ice Fang. Basically, just a rough, um, a rough team build right here. Just a quick one. Just to kind of show you all how I do it. And then, ooh, there's a there's one card on set that I really like. Let me get it. <laughs> Let me get it. Crawdont. Yeah, it's this one. This is the one I was looking for. Sludge Bomb. Crawdont is so nice on on teams just because it can deal with Tangrowth. <laughs> Super nice. And getting rid of Tangrowth opens up like Dragonite. So like after we've built the team, right? After we've built this balanced team, we want to go through kind of the list of mons, the most common overused mons, and see if our team can handle it. Like, for example, just go through each one. Alakazam, can our team beat Alakazam? We have um, Spideff Gliscor, that can check it pretty well, I guess. Like, Crowdon, Aqua Jet, Dragon at Extreme Speed, both probably knock it out after any kind of chip it gets from, from anything. Tangrowth actually could even be run more Spideff, but I think, nah, maybe Fizdef is better in this scenario. Um, yeah, I think that's fine. Anyways, Azelf, mainly like lead sets, but otherwise we have checks for like Dragonite, Crawdont, Blissey, I guess is also there too. Azu, uh, so we have Tangrowth, Blissey, for other Blisseys, we have Crawdont and Dragonite. And then kind of like just go through like the list like that and, and see if your team has something for it. Like Tangrowth is amazing versus Breloom, really, really good versus Breloom. Um, versus like Clefa uh, Clefable, we have... I guess Crawdon can 2-hit KO, Heatran can Magma Storm Trap it. You can also run like, I don't know, I guess Payback is there for Psychics and stuff, but why not just run like, maybe you're having more trouble versus Clef, you just run Flash Cannon or something. Like that could work. Could work pretty well. So yeah, just like basically go through it, see what you're weak to, change things up. And then when you're actually like testing it and stuff like that, then you really get an idea of of what you're weak to and what you need what you need more firepower for what you need more wall power for something like that some some ways of like just trying to figure out the holes and patching them and i guess that's how you really go about doing it but that's balance for you that's basically a balanced team for you Ooh, there's something wrong with this tangrowth i wonder what it is now we have both special attacks and we have physical attacks what's wrong with this tangrowth is you should not be running a nature that takes away from attack instead we run a nature that takes away from speed speed is bad anyways we don't need to run speed on this thing so now we have attack not affected and special attack not affected by the nature so another thing to keep out keep an eye out for when you're building teams and stuff like that but that is a balanced team I, I, like i said i have no idea if this team is going to work but this is just a general idea of how to go about uh, building a team how to go about checking the team and seeing making sure that it has the roles that you need for it to be able to deal with at least the majority of the OU tier and uh, maybe some other mods as well here and there let's just make sure we don't get 6 0 by something entirely uh, if possible if possible <laughs> some some Pokemon there is no choice like 6 0 by Kirim 6 0 by Volcarona uh, who knows <laughs> Uh, but of course they're not in this generation or for BD BDSPOU, they're not there uh, but just an idea to keep in mind for building in any generation hope this uh, balanced kind of guide helps in terms of just seeing how it's done so now let's take a look at the playstyle known as offense there are a lot of ways in which you can build a an offensive team and each kind of offensive team they're like different ones and they're called different things so I'll break it down for you all so let's say, for example, new team, let's say, for example, that you have a team that's full of, I guess, offensive Pokemon that do have some kind of durability, something that can have some survivability, but just be really offensive. Um, if you have a lot of those on a team, it's probably considered bulky offense. And in Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, for example, let's just make a bulky offense team. Physical attacker, let's think about a physical attacker, maybe... Mamoswine, it's got a little bit of bulk here and there, you know, a little bit of bulk. Perhaps um, Rapid Spin Mon, or let's take, let's get a Mon on the speedy side, right? So let's take a look here, Starmie's a good one. Um, all around, maybe, see if I click this BST, then it shows like everything with the good 
base stat total. Tyranitar is a good one. Nice all around Mon. Um, then we have any like good Spadef, but still like special attacking Mons. Yeah, look at this base 120 special attack Togekiss. Let's get Togekiss on the team. And then I don't have a Steel type yet, so I'm gonna put Heatran. Look at that synergy, nice Fairy Steel. So like type synergy is still pretty nice, but then we have Mons that can cover different threats, and we're gonna like continuously, you know check the OU tier and stuff and see what we were weak to with this kind of team. Uh, and then, you know, maybe like, I don't know, Breloom could work. So this is like a bulky offensive kind of team. We have Pokemon that can sponge hits like Tyranitar, Tokus, Heatran. Even Breloom can sponge something. Still can Starmie and maybe Mamoswine. A little less so with these guys than these guys, but uh, still, did I copy something? Clear. I hate when I click that button. Don't like that. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so this is kind of what you'd consider more bulky offense and you know you just fill it out of course through the methods that I showed you you can click on this thing and then yeah BDSP I guess they're filling out more BDSP because the last time I checked they, there wasn't really these kind of sections there or anything like that so I love this um, life orb set could work no assault vest in this uh, brilliant damage shiny pro but let's say you're building in like gen 8 OU or something or in a different generation you could run AV Mamoswine signature AV Mamoswine is always there just um, keep a track of you know which video I use it in so that you could always just go back to that one video and then copy copy paste from the paste bin easy to do that very easy and yes yeah, that's basically how I build my teams like I don't even I don't even go to this thing like I don't even go to like the smoke on page I just go back to like a previous team I'm like hmm which set was really fun I'll just copy that and put it on the team again <laughs> But there, of course, I do build like different types of sets and stuff like that that are not listed on that site. But then, yeah, so like Starmie, we're going to run like a more offensive set with Starmie. Let's just run, yeah, nice analytic could work. Life Orb. And then let's go to Tyranitar. Can I not control? Oh, because it doesn't show up. Tyranitar. What do we like here? We kind of like, kind of like Choice Band. Togekiss, I mean, you could still run Defog on this. I would run probably Rocks, the Rock set for this one. Magma Storm, Earth Power, Taunt. Could run Leftovers on it. Yeah, sometimes this recommended EV spread is not good. <laughs> it's not good at all. Uh, I like Choice Scarf Breloom. With Technician, Bullet Seed, Mock Punch, no, Force Palm, Mock Punch, Spore could work. The reason you'd run Scarf with Mock Punch is to out prioritize Weavile's Ice Shard. You're faster than it with Choice Scarf, so then your priority goes first. And then Togekiss. I don't even know what to do with Togekiss here. I guess maybe like... I guess a Nasty Plot set could work. Sub Nasty Plot. With like Air Slash and... I don't know, Aura Sphere? Or, I don't know. Something like that could work. And there it is. So, basically it's kind of like how you build a... Bulky Offense team. This is kind of more bulky offense, I would say. Not really Hyper Offense or... or Hazards offense or webs offense, which I'll get into next. I won't I won't build like all the sets for everything. Just I'm giving you guys like a general idea, I guess, of how to go about doing it. Um, anyways, you have the option for um, let's say for instance, I'll just delete this. Let's say for instance you have, you know, uh, you you want to start off with a lead mon. It's usually called a suicide lead, where you set up multiple hazards and then have a ton of setup sweepers that followed follow along. That's considered hyper offense. My favorite one, Skarmory, right? You have the rocks, you have the spikes, you have the, um, and of course, usually on these, you run speed. Not like your typical defensive set. So something like that, and then you'd have like Brave Bird Taunt uh, with the sturdy and the love. On these kind of sturdy lead mons, always look into Custat Berry. Custat Berry means that when you get to sturdy range, you'll go first, <laughs> pretty much. Most of the time, unless they have like a priority move or something, but... Like, that's basically a really good way of using a lead Pokemon. Then let's have, like, Setup Sweeper. So, if we had Gengar allowed, this would be a great 
time to run Gengar here. In other generations, you can easily do that with the Skarmory. But let's say for BDSP, we want to run a Ghost. So let's see what's available for us. The only, only Frost has Miss Magius in Yu Yu. Um, let's go with Miss Magius then in that case. Then we got like maybe Belly Drum, Azu, Scizor, SD Scizor, um, SD Breloom, Swords Dance, Swords Dance, Belly Drum, Nasty Plot, and then like a Choice Scarf Garchomp in the back or something. This is what you consider hyper offense or like hazard offense or something like that which is a really great way of using offense so like there's a lot of categories of offense like the first one i showed you was more bulky offense this one's more hyper offense um of course you know because we have like let's say sweeper sweeper because you know you got like lots of options for like ways of sweeping an opponent and when you have like these hazards up and chipping everything down it becomes super easy to do that and we have like a Pokemon that has a good speed tier in the back as well. Nice speed with the Choice Scarf. But like even then, without this thing, we have Priority Mock Punch, right? We got, oops, did I click Caps Lock? Priority Mock Punch. We have Priority Bullet Punch. We have Priority Aqua Jet. So there's a lot of like good Priority Mons here. And that's a great way of outrunning your opponent without having to run a fast Pokemon. So that's basically... Hyper Offense or Hazards Offense, you have the option for a Sticky Web Team. So there's a Sticky Web Team you can build. Actually, I'll, for this one, I'll just show the example of my Rampardo team. This one here is an example. You know, you have, uh, of course, your middling speed tier mons. Like on, on Sticky Web, right? You usually want to make Pokemon that don't have the best speed put in more work. And so therefore, you slow down other opposing Pokemon using a Shuckle or using um, other Sticky Web users such as Sticky Web users such as, hmm, I guess Masquerine. Aria Dose is there too. You have more options for Sticky Web on Sword and Shield like Rebombi, for example, is another option you could do. And on like uh, different generations and stuff. But Shuckle I think is probably my favorite Sticky Web lead because it also has Stealth Rocks on it too, so I don't have to add a Stealth Rocker to the team. Um, Masquerade seems like an interesting one. I definitely might try it out with Sticky Webs. Um, Cricketune is cool. Technician and stuff. Aridos is not bad at all. Very nice. <laughs> or you could run Surskit or Spinarak if you're trying to be real heat. Trying to be real heat out here, you could run that. But yeah, like Rampardos benefits a lot. Like once you lower their speed, like this here, Sheer Force boosted Life Orb stuff is really good. Um, middling speed tier mods. Let's take a look at those. Like on Sticky Web, you would love to run Pokemon such as, look at this, sort by speed. Um, anything below, like anything like 100 or below maybe is like a middling speech. Like you could run, oh, Shaman's Release. Nice. I got to use that next as well. So Sticky Web's Entei could be pretty cool. Like Choice Band, make everything slower. What else? Sticky Web's Electivire maybe. Base 90 speed is pretty decent. Actually, not a lot of not a lot of great mons in base 90. In terms of um, to be used on Sticky Web, I guess Zangus. Zangus is pretty good. Web Zangus is actually dangerous, <laughs> very dangerous. Oh, Nido King is a great Sticky Web user. Love Nido King on webs. Heracross is a great one. So like, you see what I mean, basically, right? Middling speed tier mons on this kind of team. Like, so I, I based it around Sticky Webs plus Rampardos and Manaphy. Then I had two priority users and I had a spin blocker in Gengar. There's no Manaphy now so of course you can't run that or Gengar in this uh, generation but kind of get the idea of how you build a Sticky Web team. You basically just choose a Pokemon with a speed tier that you are like oh I wish this thing could actually be faster so I could outrun things and then just pair it with Shuckle and then build your team around that have a spin block or have some way of blocking defog or rapid spin and then just something to take advantage of it in the back as well so that is um another option there is a, a way that you can run offense and you can run it with one of my favorite kind of um strategies or play styles in, and that's volturn volturn is a very switch heavy um play style in offense it's a category of offense or some category of offense and you can actually just um, annoy the uh, the heck out of opponents by just being able to switch around and stuff. If they don't have a ground type, they can't block Volt Switch. And if you are just 
threatening Pokemon after Pokemon, they um, are basically just going to rage quit. And I've had I, that has happened a lot. I used to run, I used to be like the king of Voltron back in Gen 5 with like Landorus Eye and stuff like that, running a lot of really cool teams. Um, but anyways, Infernape, I love Infernape on uh, Volturn because it has a very powerful U-turn. So the way you can run Volturn, you just type U-turn, see what you got here, see your options um, in whatever format or generation you're playing. You can just see the options here. I love Infernape, so I'm going to go with that. Volt Switch, let's add a Volt Switch Mon for this team. Rotom, Magnezone. You don't need Magnezone because, I mean, Magnezone is great. It's a great Pokemon. Good at trapping Steel types, but Infernape destroys Steel types. So let's run with uh, Rotom Wash here uh, for this one. So nice. Infernape, Rotom. Rotom, good combination is um, Scizor, right? You got the, the Rotom Scizor. That's a really good core that's been run since uh, the beginning of time for when Rotom was out, I guess. <laughs> Not really the beginning of time, but you know what I mean. Yeah, the beginning of time, exactly. It's Dialga, Gen 4. Um, what else? I guess, uh, yeah, like, so a way to block Volt Switch, perhaps, and switch around and try to play around it. You can add Ground-type Gliscor with U-Turn. Then we have, um, so this is like Volturn core right here, right? And so on a Volturn team, you're like, you have a lot of switch momentum. You would, you know, U-Turn, you got U-Turn, you got Volt Switch, and then you got U-Turn, and then it's like you got these you got these moves switching around and stuff. Of course, you're going to fill out the rest of this stuff, but just the general idea. Then you have a Pokemon that you use your momentum to bring in and just drop a heavy hitting attack on something. Let's say, for example, um, something that's really powerful a high attack or a high special attack mon. Let's go special attack this time. Latios, right? Choice specs, Draco Meteor. So your momentum generated from this offensive Volt Switch or Volt Turn team is going to be able to bring in Latios for you to drop a Draco on something. And, you know, you're going to put in the finest of work. They have a fairy type. You immediately double to your Infernape and then Flare Blitz something or you turn out again and just keep doing that. You have the pressure from Stealth Rock. So hazards are actually really important on Volturn teams because you want to be able to um, force switches. Because you are you are basically forcing switches with with Volturning and then you have hazards backing you up so that they take chip every single time they switch. And then you have like a hard hitting attacker like this, for example. Then maybe you have um, another hard hitting attacker in, I don't know, say on the attacking side, what have we got here, Tyranitar. Maybe, I don't know, maybe Choice Ban Tyranitar, for example, could work. So you have like um, Choice Scarf Rotom, Choice Scarf, yeah, Choice Scarf Rotom, Choice Ban Titar, Choice Specs, and then you have uh, Defog, Scizor, Rocks on this. Here, you could even run, or you could run Choice Ban here. You could even run Choice Ban here, and you could run Double Ban, or you could run um, Lum or Chopel with, uh, I don't know, Dragon Dance could work. Look at that, like for example, you have a sweeper now. So like, there's a lot of really cool ways you can run Volturn and just force things out, bring other things in and apply a lot of pressure. So that's another way of running an offense team is running it with Volturn. Now there are other um, offensive playstyles. I guess another offensive playstyle could be Trick Room. Trick Room is actually a pretty offensive playstyle, I would say, because if your Trick Roomers are bulky, it, I guess you could say it's balanced if they're bulky, but I would say it's borderline like bulky offense. Like the, the way you play Trick Room is played very offensively. Um, for example, let's actually delete this stuff here. Look at like, for example, look at my Trick Room teams that I've made here. I've made a Sudowoodo and a Carnivine Trick Room team. Let's take a look at Sudowoodo, most recent one. Um, you can see here, right? I'm running Bronze on with Explosion so that we can bring in something else. Kecleon is an offensive Trick Roomer on this team. Crest is a bulky Trick Roomer, but Still, it's going to trick him up when he gets weak. It's going to Lunar Dance and then bring in another offensive Mon, put in the work. So it's used very offensively, even though it kind of looks more bulkier. It's it's a very offensive team. So let's just make one, I guess. I'm going to just throw in my favorite Trick Rumors in Bronze on Cresselia. And I love Kecleon, but I'm not going to use Kecleon. I'm going to try to make it different. So you basically you know, look for Trick Room. Look for Trick Room teams. Here, as you can see, there's a lot of Trick Rumors. So... You don't have to use the ones I'm using. You could just use... Uh, so, like, I basically, the way that I structure Trick Room teams is 
half the team should be like trick room setters. Half the team should be able to set up trick room for you at least. And then the other half of the team should abuse the trick room, should be low speed tier mons. Look for Pokemon because like what trick room does, if you don't know, maybe I got ahead of myself, but if you don't know what trick room does, it uh, reverses the speed tiers kind of in 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 the uh, the room condition, I guess the house, the trick house. You'll be able to make your slower Pokemon go first while the effects last. It's about five turns. So slower Pokemon go first, faster Pokemon go last, other than priority moves. Priority moves always go first, like bullet punch, mock punch, etc. And so with this playstyle or with this uh, kind of a strategy, slower Pokemon thrive. So you're going to be able to um, kind of build this team around the slower Mon. So you can, if you actually click it once, you filter by the highest speed and the lowest speed on the bottom. If you click it again, lowest speed comes on top. But then it's like a lot of baby stuff too. <laughs> a lot of baby Mons on there. Anyways, so yeah. Half the team trick rumors, maybe Zatu is another trick rumor because actually Zatu, Zatu actually bounced back hazards which could be useful because trick room trick room teams don't really like hazards a lot of people can just set up rock spikes etc so maybe just having a way of blocking is great um, anyway so then we have three trick room setters we are going to want some slow mons let's take a look at some slow mons here if possible there's got to be something i see makuhita you know what, what evolves into what uh, makuhita evolves into hariyama add hariyama i love crawdon on trick room and then what are we missing here? Don't have a ground type, so we have maybe Camerupt, slow Pokemon. So then on Trick Room teams, you always want to change the IVs. What are IVs? These are like the um, random, I don't know, random stuff that it's given where it makes a stat better or worse. Usually you'd want as much as possible, which is the highest one is 31. But then if you are running Trick Room, you want to be as slow as possible. So you just change it to a zero and you're even slower. You make it a minus speed nature, like quiet. And now you're even slower. And look at that. You just run like that, for example. And you're able to essentially use this thing really well under trick room, outrun things by under speeding things in the trick room conditions. And that's kind of how you just go about it. I won't fill in everything here. It's going to take too much time, but just uh, a general idea of how to make a trick room team. That's another way of running offense. So I think another thing I wanted to point out was uh, against the Volturn team that I made before, the Volturn team, like with the Infernape, Scizor, and stuff like that. Let's say you're, you know, you're playing in like Gen 8 or a different Gen, for example, where there is the item Rocky Helmet. Rocky Helmet is actually a way you can counter Volturn teams by providing uh, pressure to the U-Turners, because of course, you know, like the ground types can block the Volt Switchers. Rocky Helmet can pressure the U-Turners by giving them consistent chip damage each time they click U-Turn. That's another way I love countering um, Volturn teams is through Rocky Helmet. So if you're playing another generation where Rocky Helmet's usable, one of my favorite items, definitely use that along with like Heavy Duty Boots, AV, all kinds of stuff like that. There, there are a lot of different items in different generations. Then uh, Brilliant Diamond, Shiny Pearl. So definitely use what's good in each um, respective metagame. But anyways, that's, uh, that's Trick Room. I'm going to throw in a separate category for weather teams now. Honestly, you could structure weather teams um, any way you want in terms of playstyle, like offense, balance, etc. But for um, Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl specifically, for rain teams, I'd go offense because Drizzle isn't allowed at the OU tier. So you can't just activate weather when you switch in. You'll have to click rain dance. So best to go as offensive as possible for it. Also, disclaimer, when you're playing on Wi-Fi, you can use Drizzle Pelipper anyways. You can do whatever you want. And same goes for other generations, I think, like, you know, I think a Drizzle isn't banned in, um, in 8, Gen 8, 7, 6, uh, I think 5 it is, right? Gen 5, uh, Rain, Unlimited Rain is banned? I'm not, I don't even remember, that was a long time ago. Um, but you can run, like, you know, Drizzle Pelipper, Swift Swimmers on the team, you'll probably win as well in, um, on Wi-Fi. Anyway, let's, let's do Rain first, let's do Rain. We want, um, Rain Dance users, Swift Swim users, we want to be able to abuse the weather as much as possible right so dry skin hydration are other abilities that work uh, viable ones that work in um in rain as well as utilizing moves that become 100 percent accurate such as hurricane and thunder so let's begin with um some rain dancers right we want some rain dancers a zelf i love a zelf and i love scissor with these kind of weather setting teams right of course, you're going to want to run Rain Dance. 
and you're also going to want to run the um, item that boosts, or I guess not boost, but like extends the turns of the weather. And that's Damp Rock. If you're running Sun, you run Heat Rock. If you're running Sand, you run Smooth Rock. And if you're running Hail, you run Icy Rock. So we go Damp Rock here because it's a rain team. I'm not going to fill in everything like I said before. I'm um, just going to give you guys an idea. Actually, I probably could because I'm pretty sure I used these Mons before. Yeah, here, like these two Mons, Azelf and Scizor are perhaps my favorite Rain Dance users in this um, generation. Just because they do the job really well. So let's just go with these two. I'm going to make the team different. But these two are really nice. You know, we have Stealth Rocks, which should get rocks up and then, or Rain Dance first, then Rocks Explosion to bring in our Swift Swimmer. Then we have Scizor, which is like a bulkier variant of um, any kind of Scizor. It can still do a lot of damage. And like, you know, EVR Pokemon to be able to knock stuff out. Like this one here, 128 attack Adamant, knocks out Weavile from full HP. Otherwise, it's a roll if you're not running this attack, but still bulky enough to take hits from like Draco Meteor, Latios and stuff. Anyways, Rain Dance is nice. Then, um, Swift Swim users. Let's add a Swift Swimmer for the team. Let's go with uh, Ludicolo is one of them. Because usually I like to run a physical, if I'm running Swift Swimmers, right? I'd run usually one or two. If I'm running two, one of them is going to be a physical attacker. One of them is going to be a special attacker. Because we want to be able to break things on each respective side, right? Because for example, Ludicolo, amazing, amazing Swift Swimmer. Um, really great Pokemon overall. Love this Mon. Gets walled by Blissey every single day of the week unless you're running... Swords Dance with Drain Punch, I guess, but let's put on a special set and then we can run maybe like a physical attacker like Kabutops, which will destroy Blissey. Maybe get walled. I don't know if this even gets walled by Skarmory. You can just Swords Dance and Waterfall if you want to, but yeah, like we have um, physical special, Swift Swimmers, two Rain Dance users here as well. Maybe we add like, for example, a Dragonite could be cool. This is a flying type Pokemon. And Dragonite, Rain Dragonite, could easily run <laughs> choice specs, right? With Draco Meteor, Hurricane, Thunder. Look at this, Hurricane Thunder being used by the rain. So we can just uh, hit 100% of the time. Stab move Hurricane as well. And we ordered it properly with the Dragon first, and then the next Flying, Thunder, and then Water moves get boosted by the rain. So we can go Surf. That could work. Yeah, something like that could easily work. Maybe go, we can go maybe modest here, or I guess Timid's fine too to outrun a bunch of stuff as well. Could also work, but that's an option for you. You know, with this thing, we have like physical attacks with Stone Edge, Waterfall, etc. And then we have Surf, Energy Ball, or Giga Drain, and Focus Blast, Ice Beam. And then last Mon, like, I don't know, because it's a rain team, electric type attacks. We don't have any sponges for that. What ground types are here? So the ground types are pretty useful to block Vol Switch and block any kind of electric attacks which is really good. Don Fan could work, but we're going more offensive, right? So maybe I, we already have a dragon Mamoswine, easy Mamoswine right here. Look at that. So we got priority ice shard now. So this is how you build a rain team basically in this generation. Um, Cause we, we have basically everything we need, right? We have Swift Summers, we have rain dancers, we have um, Dragonite, which is choice specs. Does this thing get rain dance too? You can run rain dance Mamoswine if you want to. <laughs> you, can put, you can put rain dance on this thing as the fourth move if you really wanted to. Um, so that's rain. Then we have, uh, what else? Let's, let's build a quick sand team. So some sand, sand users. Actually, I'm not even going to build one. I, this is like literally the best sand team I've ever made was this Choice Specs Proba Pass. I, I love this team a lot. Well, I guess best sand team in Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. I'll just go over this team and how I built it. I basically just chose either Hippowden or Tyranitar because those are your two options for sand users. In other generations, you have the option for Gigalith. I guess you could also run Hippopotas in lower tiers. And, um, or I guess, yeah, basically that can really, um, work for you if you're a lower tier player and you just want to run a sand team down there. Um, sand rush is not a very great option here in this generation, because if you look, it's only sand slash and it's not really the best Pokemon, but in other, of course, generations, Excadrill, absolutely fantastic mon draco's ult is a huge huge threat in in sword and shield um draco is just banned in sword and shield ou i think i haven't played that generation in a while but i know people have been asking am i going to go back to gen 8 ou and stuff or am i going to play gen 8 again definitely will definitely will it'll be uh sooner than you think i, I believe but i'm going to try to switch things up a bit and play a, a lot of different stuff 
Stoutland is pretty cool too. I've used that in OU before, but Probo Pass is actually amazing in Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl with Sand Force. I've been able to just two KO or Oko so many different things with choice specs. Like, this is not really impressive, but base 75, modest, choice specs, Sand Force with the moves here. Really, really great. Um, but yeah, like, basically, you want to try to use the sand to your advantage. Evasion is banned in competitive mods, but if you're playing on Wi Fi or whatever, you could use whatever you want. So that's not a really um, a restriction for those kind of players. But on like standard play of um, Showdown and stuff like that in OU, you're not going to be able to use Evasion, things like that, because they are banned. You can't run like King's Rock either or Bright Powder or anything like that. So I used to be able to run, or you used to be able to run, uh, I guess, Sand Veil, Bright Powder, or like you know, stuff like that with like Garchomp and things, but not anymore. So other ways is like, yeah, Sand Force. Is Probopass the only one? Um, no, I guess you have, uh, you could even run like Tyranitar with Sand and then hit Power on with Sand Force instead of Sand Stream. That's an option. There's uh, Gastrodon as well, which is pretty cool. I, oh, I might even try Sand Force Gastrodon, maybe. I don't know. Um, ever since I saw that one Specs Gastrodon annihilate me on the last video, but that was not even Sand Force. That was just Storm Drain, I guess. Maybe Dugtrio could work. And like Sand Force Dugtrio, you could run that. I don't know. But yeah, like, there's not a really a lot you can do with weather teams other than, I guess, like, you can chip things down with the sand, which is great. Sand Force is the way to run sand teams. On something like Hail, you definitely want to go Obama Snow for Hail. And then you just, like, run Blizzard Mons, basically. Like, for example, let's just go Blizzard. Like, you could just run, like, Glaceon, like, Specs Glaceon with Blizzard in the Hail. You can't run Snow Cloak. You could run Ice Body, though. You can run Ice Body. Articuno as a Mon itself was illegal here because of the fact that Pressure is unreleased and Snow Cloak is banned. <laughs> so you can't use it entirely, which is crazy. But it's pretty funny, though. Um, yeah, so there, I mean, I guess like Hail Teams, there's, you can't really run a dedicated Hail Team really in this gen, but like maybe you're running it in like. If you're running it in like Sword and Shield, I'll just do a Sword and Shield example. An example would be, let's say you're running um, uh, Nine Tails. Actually, like Hail is probably one of the better weathers in Sword and Shield because you can just run it with Arctozolts. That's how you run it here with like um, Nine Tails, Arctozolt. I don't know, Corviknight is an option. And then I forgot what that, like, I don't know what it was, maybe ground type like Swampert or something. Wasn't there like a team that kind of looks similar to this or something? I don't know, something like that. But there's like way you can run like Hail Team and then you got like different options and stuff. It's just a lot more options you can run for weather in um, those kind of generations. But yeah, like there's like um, Slush Rush is the ability. Slush Rush. What are the all the Slush Rush mods? Let's see. Yeah, like... Arctozolt, Arctivish, really, really good ones. Beartick is... What do you got for a well-played Beartick? Let me know. Sandslash, also really good too. A lot more options there. Sun, I think, actually has potential in Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, definitely. Like, for Sun, you have uh, Torkoal, of course, or Ninetales even is good too, but Torkoal, I think, is always the more preferred Sun user just because you have both Rocks and Rapid Spin. So you can al always do that, for example, and then you have the Heat Rock to extend the turns of drought then chlorophyll users there are plenty of right you got venusaur you got tangrowth you got um shifter is a good one i've used before tropius is all right in sun probably here could do better um but yeah i, I would say venusaur victory bell actually is pretty good too like this thing yeah you got weather ball on this too so in brilliant diamond shining pearl i don't think venusaur has weather ball if I am not mistaken. Nope, not here. In Sword and Shield it does. So Sun's actually amazing there as well, I would say. Is another great uh, weather ability. Solar Power. Solar Power is actually amazing. We could run it with Charizard. In other generations, you could run Heliolisk, for example. That's another uh, common Solar Power one to boost the special attack. But Charizard actually with like, because in other generations, right, you can run heavy D boots and then just not take any damage from rocks. It's another way you could build a sun team. There are like a lot of ways, but like on sun team, you got to make sure that you have good hazard support because, because you're running heat rock, right? You're going to want your defoggers. You're going to want your rapid spinners for the team. And that's definitely um, something you'll need to uh, keep a track of. 
I'm not really making this a category of offense. This is just more sort of a general weather category. You can run it any way you want, really. Um, there's no uh, restrictions like, for instance, in Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl for rain. You, know, you can't run Drizzle. Here, you can just run Drought and put on a few Chlorophyll users, put on a few... Um, Maybe like maybe like one chlorophyll user, one solar power user, and then like Heatran is actually a great thing to run on Sun because in um, other not here it seems, but say you're in OU for example, you could run Eruption. Like what's gonna switch in besides another Flash Fire Mon? What's gonna switch in to a Drought Sun Boosted Max Special Attack Modest Choice Specs? Eruption, like not a lot of mods. It'll two a KO Blissey, like it'll two a KO just any Blissey. So very powerful, and you get the flash fire boost too. But here in BDSP, you could still run this with like flamethrower or fire blast. No, I actually overheat, overheat or something like that could work. Still really powerful, and the reason you'd run it is so that because your drought is powering up fire type attacks, you don't exactly want to switch into flare blisses and all kinds of other fire attacks as well from opposing mons, right? So you have the fire immunity. That's another reason why you run like that as well. But a lot of options for, for sun, some good options. Did I even make a, did I make a sun team yet? I don't know if I did. Oh, I did. I actually did. Look at this one right here. So because I, the whole eruption um, thing I was telling you about, I did it with camera up and it was actually really good. So I made a, a sun boosted camera up team. We had the muscle band chlorophyll user right here, Swords Dance Victory Bell, and then it was, this is more sort of a, a balanced sun team, very balanced sun team, because we have the um, Spadef Defog, we have the Rocks on Torkoal, the Bulky Wish Passer, Slowbro, and then two offensive, actually two really offensive mods. So this was probably more, this is exactly the example I was telling about before. There's some teams that are considered more balanced, semi-stall, they're kind of like the same meaning, but this is probably more leaning towards semi-stall because you know, you have wall, 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 and wall, offense, offense. But then I guess this one's kind of more setup oriented. So it's more balanced slash semi stall. It could be like the same thing pretty much for this team. But yeah, that's another option for Sun right there in, um, in this uh, generation. So far, I've gone through how to construct a balanced team, various types of offensive teams, and really briefly touched on weather teams. And I guess one more thing to add on for rain teams in particular, let's say you're building in any other generation, right? Kind of, I've kind of like touched on like for Hail, for instance, I showed you that Hail is not really that great in, in BDS POU, but in like Gen 8 Sword and Shield, Hail is fantastic. Like you use like weather abilities, Slush Rush and all that kind of stuff. It's just great. And make sure that when you're building weather teams, you utilize those weather abilities. But let's say, you know, for Rain, you're building in any other generation, don't even worry about Rain Dance. Use Pelipper or Politoed and that's that, you know, just that's an additional slot for something else um, for you, for your team. Um, and now, before we move on to stall teams, which is a completely different category, I did miss one offense team that I need to go over in this video, and it is a subsection of, um, so of course it's offense, type of offense. It is um, a type of hyper offense, I would say. There are, there's hazard offense, which, which I showed you with the Skarmory lead, and then there's also screens offense. I gotta show you screens offense, because that's another way of playing offense which is a little different than, you know, other offensive teams because you I mean, of course it's centralized around setup sweeping your opponent, which is like, you know, going for your setup moves and stuff like that, trying to sweep, but you're using a Pokemon like that has reflect and light screen to be able to give added bulk to your sweepers to make them even more dangerous because with screens, they're tougher to take down, which means they have more opportunity to sweep you. Great examples of screens users in BDSP are Latias, Latios, um, Espeon's a great one. You also have like Azelf, which is another great one. Maybe uh, Yuxi is great as well. Perhaps Cresselia. All of these are great ones. And the reason is, of course, because they have um, the great setup potential. Like they have the potential to get the screens up easily because they have some good bulk, either good bulk or good speed to be able to do that. And then they also get you or transition you into the next sweeper or into the sweeper pretty easily. Like for instance, Ladias not only has the dual screens, but it also has Healing Wish, which allows you to click that 
knock yourself out, go to your next Pokemon, and then maybe once once something gets weakened, you switch out, you bring it back in and they're healed up all the way. That's one option you can do. Here we have dual screens, but then Memento. Let's say you're running a more frail sweeper like when I when I had Zangus. I ran it with Memento Latios, and I think this is probably one of my more favorite screens users because Memento actually makes you even bulkier when you bring in the next mon because addition to the screens, it also lowers the target's attack and special attack by two, making them pretty weak, like really, really weak overall. But it also makes you faint in the process. Here we have Espeon with dual screens. We can also run something like Yawn. And so we have the Reflect Light screen and then Yawn, which actually forces them out which can get you into the next Pokemon by manually switching easily, very easy to do that, or just spamming Psychic, waiting for this thing to go down. Then Azelf, you have, uh, you know, Reflect, Light Screen, and then um, something like Explosion could work. And you have Rocks on this thing, you have the option for Rocks on this thing too. So Explosion, just a way of getting rid of this thing so that you can utilize the screens as full as possible, as much as possible, and then um, get into the next Pokemon. You can see, I think, does this have a Memento here? Yes, it does. So Memento is the option here. You could run that with this Pokemon. You have uh, Lunar Dance here. So they're all like ways of making you faint and then bringing out the next Pokemon. Just great way for to utilize um, dual screens. And of course, the item you're going to want to run on any of these kind of Pokemon are Light Clay because you want to extend the turns of the screens from 5 to 8. And that's going to make things... Way more difficult for your opponent unless they got defog or break break one thing to note with espion is that with dual screens and magic bounce magic bounce actually bounces back defog so actually defog removes screens from um your opponent's side it removes hazards from both sides screens from your opponent's side but magic bounce bounces back defog the effects of defog so while defog can remove rocks from both sides or hazards from both sides um, even with Magic Bounce, it can't remove screens from both sides of the Magic Bounce. And that, I think, is really cool. A really cool effect of um, Defog on Magic Bounce. So that's one reason to run Espeon over the others is because you can't get rid of screens by Defogging. You have to go for, like, Brick Break or something. Or you have to wait for this thing to be out or KO'd in order to, in order to Defog. So now let's um, try to structure a screens offense team. So like I said, you know, this is a... Category of uh, hyper offense because you're running a lot of sweepers. Hyper offense. Uh, the hyper means that you're you have sweeper, 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 sweeper on the team. That's like that's what that's what basically hyper offense is. The, the Skarmory lead that I showed you is a hyper offense team, but it's called I guess it's hazard offense as well. And then um, this is like screens offense is what we call it. So yep, we got the Lottie here. Then we're gonna run like Tyranitar. It's a great dragon. It's like we have like a dragon and sweeper or something. I like running Tyranitar on. Screens offense team because it's bulk it becomes really bulky. Easy to set up like multiple Dragon Dances if you want to. You can run like Dragonite as well with like maybe Espeon. Kind of switch the typings up a little bit. But something like that could work. You could run um what else? Nasty plot? Maybe some nasty plot user here. Like I don't know, Togekiss or something. Maybe you have like Espeon, uh Tyranitar, Dragon Dance with and Togekiss, and then Shell Smash user could work. Maybe Shell Smash uh, Cloyster on screens offense could work, or Blastoise is an option. There's like a lot of a lot of crazy um, things you can do with with um, screens offense here, like a stored power set or something could work too. I don't know. In other generations, like regular OU, on screens offense, your favorite best friend is weakness policy. Absolutely love weakness policy and. Aurora Veil Mons are really good in um, other generations. So like Aurora Veil, this, that, then like maybe like the Jirachi, like signature, like Snored Power Jirachi is an amazing set. You can't run this in Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl because you don't have uh, all the tools for it to successfully run it. But it's like Stored Power, Stored Power Mons and stuff like that behind screens. Incredibly, incredibly dangerous. But in Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, you know, you got like Espeon, you got Tyranitar, maybe Blastoise or something. Um, what else I guess could work on screens offense and anything really any kind of setup sweeper really it's kind of similar to hazards offense like but you have screens up so you're gonna be doing you're gonna be relying less on hazards and more on setting up uh, like the potential to set up or something is really what it is do I have any screen offense examples I do I think with um with this one belly drum zangus this was a great option for memento Latios because it really helped out these 
pitiful defensive stats on Zangus. So you got screens plus memento means that even with base 60 defenses, Zangus can set up a lot easier. These are really great options on, on screens offense teams, um, of course. And then here's another example of screens offense. I had Seeking, so Dragonus Titar. Yep, Dragonus Gyarados again, really great Mon. So it just really focuses on being able to support the team by reducing the damage output, right? Utilizing the screens as much as possible. You got to run Light Clay for that, of course. Utilizing the screens as much as possible. And then trying to sweep your opponent. I guess Dragonus for Alligator is a great option on screens offense as well. Because this thing's a decent bulk as well. So you could sponge things really well. Dragonance actually makes it extremely dangerous. Uh, Garchomp could work maybe. And then you can even run like multiple screens users. You could run like maybe two screens users. Espeon Latias could work. Or just make the store power or something behind screens is an option. But yeah, like in other generations, like Gen 8, I think is the only gen you could use weakness policy, right? I forgot. But weakness policy there, absolutely fantastic. Other generations, just any other item like uh, Lumberry here. Yeah, Life Orb. So you got like a lot of tools at your disposal with this kind of team. But I, I just wanted to run through sort of the... Um, last i think offensive style you could run there are a lot of different ones i guess there's some maybe maybe i missed some but this is kind of like a like a general understanding of how to run offense and i think a great conclusion to offensive teams in general and yeah that's all i got to say for that so now let's move on to building a stall team <laughs> we're on stall now of course i gotta show you all the three main play styles with uh, balance offense and stall can't leave out stall here but how do i make signature stall teams like I guess before I even before I even get into the um, how to build a stall team, the first thing like how do I even make a signature stall team? The first thing I do is I go to the Pokemon and then I scroll, <laughs> I scroll down. Um, and of course, in like Gen Eight, you'll go to, you'll go down to like P and stuff like that. But here, it's I think the lowest tier Pokemon that we can go for is like Nu and stuff. And if is not worth it without a Violet in this. Um, generation but you know what you get the idea I look for a, a bulky Pokemon a, a Pokemon that has some potential like for instance um, sometimes actually I even I, without even having to look down here first I type in like okay what gets Parish Song because Parish Song is like okay that's like the ultimate troll on a stall team is to put a Parish Song on a Parish, Parish Trapper and then I'm like okay cool what do we have here let's do Parish Trap Dugong or, or Parish Trap Chimeco or Altaria. That's how you make us like that's how I make my stall team. I try to find something that is just so unique on or so much fun on stall, very unique, and try to um, build around it basically. So, like for instance, Parish Trap Lapras is a great one. I, I'll go with like uh, probably I don't know, Hydration maybe could work, and you could easily just go like Rain Dance, Rest, Whirlpool. And Parish Song. That's one option you could do with a uh, you could do Grip Claw. Trapping moves always last seven turns. <laughs> that's all. That's always an option right there. Then you hydration yourself and rest, and then just keep yourself healthy, and then just give yourself like a bulky EV spread of some sort. Um, you could do that, you know, and then just build around it by adding Pokemon. Like you'll have, you'll need a um, for stall teams, right? You're not running offense. You're not running any kind of offensive mod. You get to run walls and stuff like that. So you, you hear BDSP, you got Skarmory, you got um, Blissey. Nice little combination core right here with the Skarm Bliss. Very, very popular. I'm sure most people that know a thing or two about competitive Pokemon know about this core. But it looks pretty good here. And then we have a um, Unaware is actually really useful on stall. Unaware Pokemon on stall teams, I think, are 100% necessary because of the fact that it blocks setup sweepers it nullifies any stat boost your opponent has because with pokemon as passive as these pokemon are you're gonna want a way to beat setup sweepers whether it be running an unaware mon or you could even just run like a ditto stall team like you could put ditto on your team where it's not necessarily an offensive mon unless your opponent is offensive so it copies the setup the, all the stat boosts and everything too of the opposing Pokemon. So that's one way of like running. Like you could run like Ditto on your stall team if you want to to combat that. But Unaware is probably the best way of doing it. Unaware. Like for instance, maybe, um, yeah, like like Clefable could work. Or if I'm running like, 
Ooh, I, I actually like my favorite, my favorite setup, um, not setup sweeper, my favorite unaware user is definitely Quagsire. And the cool thing is in Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, this Mon gets toxic, whereas not a lot of other Mons get toxic in this generation. So I love this. I would, I would totally run these. I could also run, um, <laughs> I could also run Chimeco. Yeah, see, I love Chimeco install too, because it's like one of those unique ones. You have, um, wrap, right? You can wrap stuff, wrap Perish Trap, and then you have recover. Like you can do recover, protect, wrap Perish Song. Actually, I might even just bring back Chimeco Stall and do like a reboot of it or something. Cause I, I did that in a, in a video, featured Chimeco Stall and I, I brought it back basically. But essentially for stall teams, you're going to want your unaware user. You want to switch in for like most things basically. And so, you know, with like wall breakers such as, like I told you, like one of my favorite wall breakers is Crawdon. Really great mon to just destroy what's in front of you. And so Tangrowth can combat that unless it's Sludge Bomb variant. But otherwise, you know, you also have Skarmory, which is a good, a decent check, I guess. Unless it's Swords Dance, then, you know, you have to check it with Unaware or something or like Tangrowth can decently check it as well. You can do like Eevee this thing to live a sludge bomb plus a knockoff or something as well. Um, but then, yeah, like the rap, rap Paris Trap, some kind of Paris Song Mon, some kind of unique Pokemon could work. Dugong is another example of something that could do that. Does there anything get Infestation here? Um, not much in this one. I mean, I guess Infestation Shuckle could work. I remember in, um, in like OU for other gens, I would always look at like there are some key things I'd look at for making stall teams. Parish Song is one of them, right? Definitely like Parish Song. I'd look at Whirlpool. I'd see what things get Whirlpool, Fire Spin, Santom, things like that that could trap another Pokemon and keep them in. And then what, what they could do to potentially bulky setup versus them or something like that could work. Like for instance, I was I think looking before at like when Tyranitar, you could do like on a Tyranitar stall, you could have like Sand Tomb, right? Or Block. Block Curse could work. Kind of funny, like ways of making more unique stall teams and then just like thinking about like what you could do with them. But yeah, you'd essentially try to put walls on your team and try to balance out your walls too, right? Don't have like, don't have like Skarmory, Tangrowth, Quagsire, um, Avalug, and I don't know. Like I'm just like naming all the defensive ones. Then you're going to die to every single special attack. You don't want to do that, right? So you're going to want to like spread out your defensive line like stats and stuff like that so you're gonna go like blissey blissey's great as an option or like if you're in another, another generation you could do like porygon 2 with the violite or let's do, let's look at the spidef mons actually i like registeel that's a good one i'm going back to bsp actually i'm kind of straying off here but you you guys get the idea um of course of how to do it spidef mons here mantine's a uh, pretty good one i actually haven't used mantine in a while Heavy Duty Boots, man time was great. Here, it's like you have to take 25% rocks every time you come in. Um, yeah, like, I guess, for example, hmm, Kecleon, Spidef Kecleon is pretty interesting. Registeel, I love Registeel a lot. I would make it, I would totally make a team. I would go like, I could, I could even go maybe Chimeco, Paris Trap Chimeco with like Registeel. And then. Togekiss, for example, could work. <laughs> look at this team. Look at look at how this team's coming out. It's a nice looking stall team, I must say. Um, and then what else? I guess um, we need that ground type, right? So like unaware, unaware Quag, but we gotta make it the pink, pink color, right? <laughs> the nice pink color. Yo, like something like this could actually be kind of fire, though. And then. Yeah, I, I don't even think I'd go Registeel here. Because, like, Heatran, Magma Storm, Heatran is actually another, like, big annoyance for, for stall teams. Probably just go my own Heatran with, like, Flash Fire or something could work. But, like, you know, you get the idea of how to make a stall team, basically. You just gotta put walls on your team. So, like, okay, so the key things, right? The key things is Fizz Def and Spidef walls and switch ins to a lot of things. You need something that can, um,. Help out against like taunt users and stuff. You don't want to get completely shut down by taunt, right? So maybe keep something for that. Like, um, let's see here. For example, like Heatran's a problem, right? But then let's look at like maybe the more spadef side of things. 
you could easily have um I guess Tentacruel could work on stall, right? That kind of works versus Heatran pretty decently. Unless they got Earth Power or something. Or you Ooh, you could run like Ooh. Like a Snorlax kind of stall team. Cause then you got like the thick fat, right? And then so with thick fat you can actually like run some kind of earthquake set or something versus Heatran. And this is still a stall team because you're going to have like Sleep Talk Rest. Something like that. Like Body Slam. Shuffle some Paralysis or something like that. Or just run Rest plus Curse. Could even work too. And if you get Taunted, you just Earthquake and Heatran is dead anyways. So that's an option always um, to do. On like a stall team or something. Like I'm just kind of throwing out ideas here, but... To build a stall team, all you all you really have to do is just <laughs> just have walls. Um, another great tool for stall, so like of course you're gonna need your defogger, like here your rocker, some kind of like if you're running unique stall, have a unique stall mon, like like for instance Chimeco is a great one. What other ones are there actually? Let's see. I'm sure there's like uh, I I could come up with like so many if I tried to um, decide what I wanted to build around or something like. But like you know, perish songs mons and infestation mons and things like that. Could work pretty well like you could run like a spite mon on, on a team like you could run some kind of stall team with pressure does this get a trapping move at all in in bdsp let's see um not sure i know it gets infestation in in other generations which could be run with pressure plus like spite could work or like a like pressure mons are actually really good on stall teams too Let's see what else we got here with pressure. None of these are released, unfortunately. Um, yeah, like Waylord. Waylord is one of my favorite stall mons to use on, on a team because I was running pressure block noble roar Waylord. That was actually insane. Vespiquen I've used before on stall. So like you can see kind of the trend I'm going for here with when, when I'm running stall teams, I'm really kind of trying to find a unique mon because like nobody wants to watch like me running Blissey, Toxapex, Clefable, Corviknight, and just like this all six standard stuff. Nobody wants to see that. People uh, love watching. I I'm guessing I'm speaking for you guys. I'm hoping that I'm correct. But y'all love watching my stall teams because there's some unique element to it. And I play it in a way where I'm like playing it more aggressively. I'm trying to get rid of their Pokemon and I'm playing fast and everything. And I'm using a unique Mon and I'm actually getting thumbnail text. <laughs> so like I, I do it in a more fun way. And I hope you all agree. But yeah, like think of ways of using stall uniquely. Is what I suggest. Like this is kind of unique, right? Looking pretty unique. Uh, and then I don't know, maybe like uh, maybe the, maybe the Tangrowth goes last. This kind of looks pretty cool. This mon can be whatever. Like you, this is a placeholder right here. But this kind of looks pretty cool as a stall team. You see what I mean? Like we just run bulk on everything. This is gonna be more spadef. I'm, I'm not gonna put the correct EVs. I'd run different EVs on this, but this is gonna be like um. Like some kind of a, like there's like a mixed sort of a spread here, like to optimize it or something. And then this is going to be more like Spadef, and this is going to be more Fizdef, and this is going to be more probably Fizdef, or it could also be Spadef as well. But then we have like sponges for basically everything. We have offensive options as well as like, even though it's not really like offense, offense, it's more like stall type of offense. You know, you know how, you know how I love running it. I love some way of doing damage and stuff too. And then this thing can just air slash things down. We have rocks, we have defog, we have um, unaware. Oh, I guess, does this thing get heal bell here? Um, not really, I guess. But another great option to run is heal bell on something. In other generations, a lot more mons did have heal bell. Here, not as much actually. Oh, but I guess uh, aromatherapy could be an option. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Ooh, Shaman over Tangro. Look at that. Now that is looking kind of nice because you could run like aromatherapy on this. Natural curious to get rest, and then you could run like some kind of uh, what like leech seed. Yeah, that could work. <laughs> uh, you, you guys know what I mean though. But I think a way of removing. Any kind of uh, status from your team could be really great for a stall team in particular. I think very, very great for a stall team in particular. Did Chimeco have Levitate? I forgot. 
It did. Ooh. Look at this. And then... Maybe... Maybe Vile Plume. Toxic Spikes Absorption. Poison types absorb T Spikes. So that... Ooh, look at this stall team right here. See? That's kind of how I build a unique signature stall team. Then I just do a lot of testing and try to figure out what I like most about it. But unique stuff like use more obscure mons in that first slot with like Parish Trap or like Infestation Trap or Block Setup or um, ways that, or like or even even if you want to like toxic things down or like pressure stall them if you want to do that use a unique Pokemon for that. That's always fun. Always what I recommend. But yeah, like you can see. I have ways of dealing with stuff like Valplum deals with, deals with Breloom, Heatran for Scizor, or Quagsire for Scizor as well, and then Snorlax can be, beat Heatran, any kind of stall breakers like okay, maybe Crawdon, I could set this thing to be faster than it, or versus Crawdon, yeah Crawdon's a threat. <laughs> what other grass types are there? I mean I guess Valplum is still good for Crawdon because you have the effect spore potential and you could always just run speed for like, that's a lot of speed though. Maybe Roserade is a good better check than that and you still have aromatherapy which can be run so like this could work easily could could definitely work um but that's a little quick guide on stall your essentials are your just your walls you want to make sure that you're not going to get swept so you have unaware either this or clefable perhaps you have um switch-ins to things like for instance um some things you can't really switch into with stall but you have checks and you have decent enough answers for different things you could play around stuff here and there and try to run it uniquely with pokemon like this is what, what i always love to see with stall i don't like loading up you know generic stalls i like loading up unique stalls that's what i like to do but it's just an example i don't know if this team's gonna work either but i'm just trying to give examples of how to build stall teams successfully don't lie don't rely on on one side of the defense too much make sure you have things split up like spdf defense Things like that. Um, yeah, I guess that's kind of what I suggest for stall here. Or how I, I go about doing signature stall teams, which I'm going to do another one soon. I'm definitely going to bring another one soon. They're always fun. I'm going to actually just dig through the Pokemon. Because like, what I usually do is I just spend a good amount of time just digging through Pokemon and really kind of really kind of um, shining a magnifying glass on like their movesets and what they can do and just really looking into it so i'm gonna do that and bring something unique soon but just how to run uh how to build stall is kind of how i do it um aromatherapy and like any kind of heal bell is great any kind of um i guess wish is also great for stall like you could run because oh, another I, I need to give a shout out to umbreon umbreon stalls I've, I've run a lot and umbreon is i think one of those pokemon that deals with so much because of foul play doing a ton of damage while still being just the bulkiest thing ever it's one of my favorite mons on any kind of stall team or any team in general, I guess that's not offense because you don't run offensive Umbreon too often, <laughs> I, I think. <laughs> I could though, I could. But that's stall for you all. That is indeed stall. Now let's talk about EVing our Pokemon because you know, you, when you're building a team, right? Now I've kind of given you the knowledge on how to choose Pokemon, the ways of choosing Pokemon, how to build your sets and stuff like that and just generically how to um, build a team. Now let's go into the specifics of EVing your Pokemon. <laughs> and we'll also, I'll also show you the way of how I EV my Pokemon sometimes. So there are two ways of EVing your Pokemon. The first way, let's say, let me, let me get a Pokemon where an EV spread of any kind can be used. Let's see here. So for example, Tyranitar. Let's go with Tyranitar, a nice all around Pokemon has a lot of different options it can run on this thing. So, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is ask yourself what you want this Tyranitar to survive. Because Tyranitar, you're mainly gonna want to EV this Pokemon. You're gonna wanna do a more specific EV spread for Pokemon that have survivability. If it's like an offensive Pokemon, such as maybe, I don't know, Feraligator or Garchomp or, or something like that. If it's more offensive, you're trying to run like a Swords Dance Sweeper or something, all you gotta do, I mean, it's easy. You just go max, max, and that. Unless you wanna be creative like me and go max 240, 4, 4, 12, 4, 12 or 8, and 4, or something like that. <laughs> You'd be creative like me. But let me show you the first, the proper way of doing it, and then I'll show you my way of doing it. So open up the damage calc, right? This is the damage calculator. You can find this if you just type Pokemon Showdown Damage Calculator or just 
slash calc in the battle wind or something, it'll pull it up. Anyways, let's go to Tyranitar. If you're not using one of these standard sets here and you're trying to make your own set, you go to blank set because this is how you how you create an EV spread of a Pokemon, the right way of doing it, right? We have uh, Sandstream, right? We have uh, ability Sandstream, Sandstream. It's important to put the ability sometimes because it this one here gives you the Spadef boost. Sand increases the, the special defense of rock type Pokemon and stuff by 1.5 times, which is great while the sand is running. And then, so let's say for example, in BDS POU, we want um, we want this thing. If this is like a stealth rock set, let's say this is a stealth rock set, right? I mean, it doesn't matter if you put stealth rocks, but we, we want to make this bulkier. If we give this thing a Choppelberry, we assume that we want it to live a fighting type attack. So then we know our purpose. We go to some fighting type mon in the tier like Infernape, right? Infernape, choice band, close combat with a Choppelberry does 136 to 160 percent but because we're running bulk we're putting max hp that still knocks us out so we learn here that we don't use tyranitar to try to take a hit from infernape what about brelu <laughs> what about brelum's mock punch pretty sure technician attacker maybe life orb is fine mock punch there we go that's a little bit more realistic i would say right Nice Technician, Adamant, Breloom. So, even without this max HP, we can still survive the Mach Punch. Why was Infernape doing so much? Infernape. Yeah, it's just that's just how much it does, really. I mean, I could like live the hit if I go Impish. But essentially, oh, it actually does live. Wow, nice. But you can essentially kind of figure out what you want to survive and EV it based off of that. Let me give another example here of another Pokemon. Tyranitar is, is a good Pokemon to EV and stuff as well. Maybe Jirachi. Actually, let's use Jirachi as an example. Jirachi is a pretty good example here. Let's go to Blank Set to EV this thing, right? And then we want to... Let's see what's in the tier. What do we want to tank in the tier? We want this Jirachi to be able to survive maybe... Hmm. How much is Weavile doing? Weavile, Choice Band, and it's going to be Throw Chop in BDSP because we don't have knockoff yet on it. So that does that much. So then let's pump. So if we're running a more defensive Jirachi, like maybe a Wish set or like, you know, one of those Stealth Rock sets, put the HP in. Now it does 92 to 108. Pump some defense. And so I pumped enough defense. It's actually reasonable, right? 84 defense allows us to survive throw chop from full. So then all we do here is we run that 84 defense. Now, speed tier wise, maybe we could run a little speed to be faster than Tyranitar with 244. Could do that perhaps. 244, right? There's, that works there. And then we dump the rest into special defense because this thing we wanted to just sponge special attacks from things like Latios, for example, which, um, I mean, if we were in another generation like Sword and Shield, then this Mystical Fire would be doing a lot. If we run Careful, though, it's a 90.2% chance to Oko, but then if we run Leftovers, 36% but then if we have like wish protect it's not going to do a KO after we click protect <laughs> if you see what I mean and that and then the Latios has to be choice locked into it so we could easily protect and then wish right after that for example so that's how you basically EV things you kind of yeah you got to decide what you want it to live and just EV it based on that um, some things are different than others of course but sometimes you know you can figure it out like in that way for example and then um, in Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, there's no Iron Head on this thing. There's Meteor Mash, so we could always go like Meteor Mash on this set. Yeah, like, like a set like this, for example, you could easily go um, Wish Protect Meteor Mash U-Turn, for example. Doom Desire is an option on this thing. You'd run it with, um, I don't know, a different set, different nature, I guess. But Meteor Mash could act as your Iron Head. 
So something like this could work with leftovers. So that's how you EV a Pokemon. You just gotta figure out basically using your damage calculator and using the list of Pokemon that are commonly seen, what hit do you want it to take? What is your purpose of using this Pokemon? And how are you going to EV it to survive whatever you want it to survive? Because now, if I'm up against a Weavile, right? If I'm up against a Weavile and it's Choice Band and it has Throw Chop and BDSP, right? If it's up against that, then we have the survivability. We have Meteor Mash on it. Do we Oko it? Pretty much all of the time. 87.5% chance. It's basically a guaranteed Oko on this thing. And so that's how you do it. So now I, I'm now that I know how to EV this Pokemon, next time I see a Weavile, I can just use this set here, stay in on Weavile when it comes in, and just Meteor Mash. And maybe he over predicts and goes for Icicle Crash on another Pokemon or something. So that's how you do it. So now I always know that I guarantee live with this set. I actually might use this set actually. It seems pretty interesting. But that's how you EV a Pokemon using a more correct method. But how about the Lord Envy method himself? Because this is, this is, of course, the Lord Envy method. This is one of my methods. But sometimes, you know, you got to EV a Pokemon differently. Let's use a Pokemon like, for example, if I had, Ma I mean, I did Mammoth one already, the Chinese EV spread. Let's do it. Okay, so let me first explain to you all <laughs> what a Chinese EV spread is, okay? Back, or, or a Chinese set, back on Pokemon Online, which was the simulator before Pokemon Showdown, many, many years ago, there was a Chinese guy who I ran into on the ladder. And even though I beat him, I was impressed with some of the weird sets he was running and how some of his Pokemon survived certain attacks I did not expect it to live. I, of course, back then talked in the chat sometimes, and I was like, nice team, can I see those sets? And he did way more than just that. Through this guy, I was introduced to the Chinese Pokemon community where back then they had a separate server, like a whole separate world with undiscovered secrets, treasures of the beyond. I was gifted their knowledge. I learned the ways of the Chinese sets and the Chinese EV spreads. They are called this for their uniqueness of how intricate they are. Very unorthodox movesets, very intricate EV spreads. And so I adopted their methods. And now whenever I build a Pokemon or see a Pokemon with like EVs in four to six stats, we call those Chinese EV spreads because that's what they traditionally are through um, my experiences in discovering them in the first place. And um, yeah, it's just really cool because the way there was Eevee, like I, I saw Eevees like crazy. Like I saw Breloom with like this, that, 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 and that or something. You know, I saw I saw like Breloom with like crazy stats and stuff. I saw like all these kind of different like weird sets. Sometimes they have a purpose and sometimes you, they don't have a purpose or they you just don't know what the purpose is until you find out. And most of the time, that's basically what I found out. I just found out through not knowing what they did. And when I just started living attacks randomly, like Chinese AV Mammoth one, that's what I did the merch around. It started living hits and I was just like, wow, okay, this set is, this set is the wave right there. Chinese Seismitoad, absolutely amazing. Um, every kind of set that I've used is just been, it's just been really, really good. So the way that that I've seen a lot of, like there's a trend, there's a pattern to these sets. And I'm trying to find a Pokemon that is a good example of that. Maybe that I can kind of show you what exactly these kind of patterns are. Perhaps I will use, um, let's see, Dragonite. Let's go with Dragonite. So Dragonite, for example, has pretty nice stats overall, pretty interesting stats. So the way that I EV Pokemon, right? Here's what I look for. Sometimes, well, I guess here is not the right example for this one in particular, but sometimes if I'm trying to EV like in a bulkier sense, because ver like what, what, what I explained in the beginning, if you're running like a really offensive Mon, there's no reason not to run just max max in your stats and, and, not, and not do anything like fancy with it. Sometimes, you know, I look for magic numbers. Magic numbers, what are they? So like, I consider them as, uh, or I was taught that they are like 333 HP is one of them. Um, three, six, nine is another one. That's a good, that's a good value. And then just the general in your actual like EV stat here, 232 HP and always go instead of like 252. Sometimes you can always just go 232. If you're a po if the Pokemon has, um, HP lower than 404, you can just run 232 HP as well. 
What does that do? I'll tell you what it does. It makes it uh, such that you have more EVs to use elsewhere. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great thing to have. More EVs. Can't get enough of them. Now, let's say your speed is 196. Bump, I immediately bump that up to 200. Like, no reason being right below a round number of 200 right there. Right? Same thing if you're like like 289 or something. Like, if, you're, if that's your base, bump it up to 300. Like, there's no reason not to. Here, now you, now you at least outrun Adam and Azu. So... Even without that, I mean that that's just that's just a given. So, you know, trying to hit round numbers like 240 could could work. Another great thing. So this is a great example I could show here because this is like pretty close defenses, but they're not even, right? If you're running a defensive set, you got to learn a thing called balance. What balance is is when a, you have a balanced Chinese EV spread, you're able to see that the defense and the spidef are both the same. They're both equal to each other. And so like you could run like a set that is bulkier, like for example, you're running um, 369 HP, and then you still have that much left over, but let's pump into defense here, right? Because this has, so maybe we could run like adamant that hits 334. Is there a jump point coming up anytime soon? Let's see, jump point at, yeah, here from, the, another thing to note is jump points. When you have a plus attack nature or a plus stat nature, you're going to see that there is going to be jump points between stats. Between 339 and 341 is an example. Then, like, for example, there's a 350 and 352 is another jump point. So keep that in mind when you're EVing a Pokemon in the way that I'm doing. So we have this HP here. Then we have, let's get the balanced defenses. Ooh, okay, hold up. So here we have hit a problem. And the problem is that... We have an extra EV left over if we try to balance these defenses, right? So in this case, what do we do? We decide, okay, so we could either put it here and it'll be useless, or we could just put it in attack. And usually, just put it in the stat that looks better, attack. So that works as well. We could also, um, if we want to run in like a more spadef set, Can we balance these defenses though? Yeah, like that for example could work. And then you just have it like this, but then I kind of like the adamant better just because you're utilizing your highest attack stat to do it. So we'll just go 242 and then it's going to be 266, 266. Like that for example could work. Or if we're doing the 232 HP method, we could just uh, do that. And then let's see if we balance defenses here. Does it work? Yeah, it does. Okay, nice. And that's how you do it. Well, because of this extra four here. But that's how you do Chinese EV spreads, for example. <laughs> there are a few things. Okay, so let, let me show you another example. I think Drapion is a great example for 333 HP. It's actually perfect. Look at this. I can do 333 HP on this. Let's say I'm running a more spadef set. Let's let's run uh, like a careful, careful nature here. Let's get get ourselves a little jump point if we can, like that. Well, this still has to get to a higher amount of defense. Let's say that 244 maybe for Titar. Something like that could work. Or actually, let's see if there's a point here. Ooh, 64. But that's not enough. Unless we run 240. Still not going to work. So we forget that. And just go with something like this. This is the art. This is the art I'm teaching you here. This is the part where you get to see how I do it. Look at that. And now we have 208, 208 in this. Look at that. That's perfect. Absolutely perfect. And so now you have yourself a nice little black sludge uh, Drapion with toxic spikes. You could easily run that on this thing. Yep. Or you could run like a like a moveset, a Chinese moveset even. Like you could go with um, let's see uh, how about, oh, there's Confuse Ray on this thing too. Confuse Ray. This thing gets uh, ooh, Torment. <laughs> that could be kind of cool. Like a, like a sub. Does it get toxic? 
Oh, it does. Nice. Subtoxic Torment. Or maybe it's Torment. Torment, Toxic, Protect. And something else like Knock Off, perhaps. Nice little Chinese set right there. We just made one. Like, right in front of your eyes, I just made one. What about Dragonite? With an EV spread like this, what could we do? Of course, multi-scale. Unless we go inner focus for the for the culture, we can go inner focus. Just to make sure that we don't get <laughs> intimidated. <laughs> nah, but we don't even need that. So all we gotta do here, let's see what they let's see what this set has. So we could do um We could probably do Ooh. Rock tomb. Rock tomb could work. Dragon tail, rock tomb. Definitely have to have roost on this set. Is there a, this doesn't get power punch in BDSP, right? I don't think it does. So I mean, this is a pretty bulky set, right? And we have rock tomb, so we don't have to run thunder wave. We could run thunder wave though. That is obviously an option. Like we can go roost thunder wave, dragon tail and iron tail. That's called, that's the tail dragonite right there. Multi tail dragonite. That's what you'd love to see. And we're just gonna run this with um, leftovers. Nice. This is, this is actually not that bad because you could thunder wave things, phase them out with dragon tail, iron tail for the clef. Does it get iron head? I don't think it does. I'm kind of curious how much this set does. Now I'm kind of curious. Hold up. <laughs> now I'm kind of curious. I've turned this into like a discovery now. Like this is an absolute discovery. Dragonite. Versus Fable. Ooh. And look, see, I was right on the money with this. 28, it does, um, I mean, this is like pretty much almost max defense. Yeah, this is awesome. This is like close enough, too, because all of them are going to run unaware anyways, right? And if they're all unaware, this is going to just 2 a KO regardless. Same. It's not Magic Guard, unaware. BDSP, unaware. Yep. Guaranteed 2 a KO after Stealth Rocks. Iron Tail, Dragon Tail, Thunder Wave, Roost. And plus, if they're parried, they're just going to get paired anyways nice I don't know about this set though I could probably work on that one but this one here looking pretty clean anyways that's how you basically do the um you know Chinese EV spreads <laughs> that's how you do it that is how you do it and so for the final section of this video for the final section of this video we're gonna use everything we've learned to try to make a team around any Pokemon and I'm just gonna pick a completely random one right now that I've not built a team around, perhaps. Maybe Wormadam Sandy. <laughs> that could be an interesting one. So I'm gonna just try to build around literally any Pokemon right now, and I'll show you how to do it. So with this Pokemon, it's bug and ground, right? So there are a few ways of going about building around any Pokemon. Firstly, right, we have to use what we learned, right? Think about the Pokemon you wanna build around what is their role going to be on this team? Now, a Pokemon like this has better defenses than offenses. So we could easily turn this into a balanced team or a stall team for that matter. Um, does this team, does, it, does this thing have anything that can be useful on those kind of teams? I guess it can be a stealth rocker. It can, it can, ha it does have infestation. It does indeed have infestation. That could actually be pretty cool on a stall team, on a signature stall team which I will definitely be considering. Um, skill swap could be useful to like swap away Gliscor's poison heal and then get poison heal ourselves, give him like anticipation or something. Um, I'm gonna start off like, maybe I'll start off with a, a different kind of set. Like I feel like, so this is a Pokemon I'm definitely considering featuring of course, but I first want to, um, I have to test it on stuff like that. Like once we build this team, I'm going to be testing it a bunch here and there, maybe see if it's workable with or if I can switch it up and stuff. But let's start off by thinking about what we want to build with this thing, either balance or stall. Or I could go offensive. I could also go quiver dance because this thing has quiver dance now. Make it a mixed attacking set with bug buzz. This thing does not get earth power in BDSP, right? Don't believe so. If I type in ground attacks, let's see. It only has earthquake, bulldoze, dig, fissure. So let's go earthquake here. Let's go Earthquake on this set here. Let's uh, let's go ahead and just go with Overcoat. Overcoat is better than Anticipation, I think, because we are now 
immune to spore, powder moves, and damage from weather. And then we can probably last move here, maybe go with Giga Drain for, I don't know, Quagsire, Swampert, etc. Could work. So have like a Quiver Dance set or something like that. Could be pretty useful. So we're going to want to go into the damage calculator, right? First things first, damage calculator. And we're going to pull up Wormadam. So we're, let's get let's get our Wormadam Sandy real quick. And I think the question we want to ask ourselves first is how much damage is Heatran going to take from an Earthquake? Because Wormadam is a base 79 attack. And I'm pretty sure it's not going to knock it out in one hit. So we might need some investment. Let's look at max HP Heatran because that's the one we want to make sure we can knock out. Since after a Quiver Dance, I'm pretty sure with max speed. Let me see how much speed this thing hits, first of all. <laughs> Let me go like uh, naive or something, right? So if I go naive, then we hit 188. So that times 1.5 is like 282, I think, or something like that. Which is going to be faster than Heatran, which is not bad at all. So let's just go ahead and see how much Earthquake is going to do. And we can see it does 87 to 103.6. So if we invest, if we invest attack, how much do we need to knock it out guaranteed? 112. So we need 112. We want max speed so that we can outrun Timid Heatran. Definitely. And so, let's see. So at plus one, so if we quiver dance up, we get plus one, plus one plus one. Now let's take a look here. Maybe Latios. How much is this going to do to Latios? Draco Meteor does 103.8 to 122.9. Psychic. We live Psychic. I wonder how much, uh, well, this is naive actually. Hmm. Here's a, here's another question. If we run a damage boosting item, if we run a damage boosting item, do we even need to invest this much into attack. Let's try Life Orb. So let's go with Life Orb here. That's a lot of damage. Do I even need all this special attack? No, I don't. Can I run Timid and not lower my Spideff? Indeed I can. <laughs> Indeed I can. Let's let's see how much it does to other Pokemon. Magnezone. Oops, caps lock. Magnezone. Choice specs. Guaranteed knockout. Magnezone. There's no Iron Defense set in BDSP, but just out of curiosity, still knocks it out. Nice. Pretty cool. What about Lucario? Lucario, Swords Dance. Ooh, not enough. But if I pump in four attack, <laughs> we do knock it out. Timid Life Orb, I think, is the way to go then. So now let's go back to Latios. Nice choice spec set here. With uh, Draco Meteor doing 90 point something. I'm going to pump some Spideff into this thing. Guarantee lives the Draco now. That's pretty cool. At uh, 88. Could be nice. If I'm not invested. Or if I don't have the boost yet. Psychic's a guaranteed knockout. What if I invest a little more? So maybe if I can't get the Quiver Dance up. Then at least. I can still survive the Psychic with 124. So actually, let's put this in now. So let's go definitely max speed with Timid because we want to be faster than Lucario at plus one speed at, after Quiver Dance. We go um, Life Orb. Four attack is all we need for Okoing things with Earthquake. And then how much was that Spideff again? It was 124. So 124 Spideff. And then is it one? Yeah, 128. 128 special attack, right? So let's go back here. And with 128 special attack, we're going to be um, hitting this thing with Bug Buzz. That's going to be the, the hardest hitting attack for this thing. 91.6 to 108.9 at plus one. Not bad. Not bad at all. After rocks, it probably dies, right? Yeah, guaranteed Oko after rocks. Interesting. Do we need this thing to take any physical attacks, though? Because otherwise, I could probably put some defense in there. Ooh, let's think about Aqua Jet. What about Aqua Jet from, like, Azumarill? Let's say Choice Band Azu. Aqua Jet is 88 to 104.2. How much defense do I need for that? Let's see. Four 
40 defense? <laughs> Should I put 40 defense into this thing too? I mean, is Giga Drain going to do a lot? Let's find out. So Giga Drain does, at plus one, does 58.6 to 69.5, which is actually not bad. So if we live in Aqua Jet from Bandit Oz, that could be actually kind of fire. I don't believe we live Crowdon, right? Crowdon's even stronger. Let's go Swords Dance. Oh, we do. From Life Orb. Ooh, and Giga Drain knocks it out and restores HP. Yo, I think, actually, so oh, actually we have to reduce the, um, we would have to reduce the special attack, though. So if we're 40 on this thing, we'd be 88 special attack. So if we do 40, 88, still not bad. Like, that's still not bad at all. And I could even just bug buzz knock it out. Giga Drain's also nice, too. Guaranteed Oko after rocks. Plus the roll, even without it, is pretty high. Now I might just go with this, because I can guarantee live the Aqua Jet. <laughs> <laughs> not bad. What's the shiny one look like? That does not make a difference, but you know what? Actually, it does a little bit. A little tint on the blue. I'll take that. Nice. So we got our set, and we got our nice Chinese Eevee spread as well. Ooh. Not bad. So that's how, basically, I just picked a random Pokemon, and I decided what it was going to do. How to build a team on any Pokemon, right? I picked one random one. I just uh, looked up things that I wanted to survive and KO. And I Eevee did accordingly. Or outrun as well. Like, you gotta, uh, like I said in the beginning, gotta think of speed tiers. And with this speed, we outrun all the base uh, 77s and 78s, which is Lucario, right? Lucario 78. Or not 90, I mean, Adamant Lucario is what I meant to say. Outruns 279. Yep. So that's really cool. And yeah, that's our first Pokemon. So now, right, once we have our set, Let's think about the partners for this Pokemon and what exactly we want to put on the team such that we'll be able to deal with Pokemon that would otherwise wall or just be able to straight up counter this Pokemon. So bug, ground, grass, flying type Pokemon definitely will be annoying. So we got to keep something for that. And I guess, uh, you know, something like Skarmory could be extremely annoying because that kind of just walls this thing completely. So there's a few things we can do. Like if you're picking a Pokemon, the, like a really, really easy way to just pair on a Pokemon with this thing, when you're building a team around any Pokemon, right? If you're walled by Skarmory, just put Magnezone. Easy, uh, easy way to just trap and knock it out so that whatever future Pokemon you're trying to use, like whatever unique mon you're trying to use can just put in the work without having to worry about Skarmory. So we could go this route, potentially. Maybe we just go like Choice Scarf or something. Just to be, um, I don't know, if maybe Scarf or Specs. Maybe Specs could be better. Hmm. Because Scarf can actually... Scarf can actually outrun, like, Lucario, which is pretty cool. I don't know if we need to... Do, uh, I don't know if we really need to do that, though, but... Could be an option. We could also run Specs as well. I'll just put Scarf for now, I guess. Like, with Vol Switch and... Thunderbolt, Flash Cannon, and maybe like Scarf Thunder Wave, just to like slow things down like Lottie, perhaps, could work for Wormadam, <laughs> could actually work, yeah, something like that maybe is an option, and then, what is this, Undo Delete, oh yeah, Lucario, I forgot about that, anyways, Add a Pokemon. So we have we have Magnezone, we have Wormadam. Now let's say that Skarmory runs Shed Shell, right? Maybe we need a knockoff user to get rid of Shed Shell. Shed Shell, of course, is an item that Skarmory would run if they're on a more defensive team so that they can avoid getting trapped by Magnezone. So a knockoff user could be pretty cool for the team. Maybe we could run like Tangrowth with knockoff. Could be good to get rid of Skarmory's items. And... This would also, I guess we have a bunch of fire weaknesses then. What else? Uh, let's see. Tentacruel could be interesting. Maybe like outrun Gliscor and have like Ice Beam on it or something could work. Or Crawdont is another option. Good wall breaker for the team. I'm pretty sure like once I build this team, it's going to change drastically. Just because I'm probably going to be weak to a lot of stuff. You have to really test things out. 
and, and then you'll figure out, you know, what you're weak to. You can kind of at least have a good model or a good idea of how you want to go about it, but things aren't really going to be the same in the end. Just um, throwing that out there as a disclaimer, <laughs> whatever this team turns into. Maybe we add like Crawdon or something could work. So actually, um, well, Wormadam is kind of walled by, it's walled by Skarmory, Gliscor, Scizor, Blissey. Crawdon could actually put on a lot of pressure, maybe versus the like, Gliscor and stuff too. And Blissey, of course. Let's just, uh, maybe I just grabbed that one set from, from, oh, wait a second. I probably <laughs> overlooked this completely in the beginning of the video. So if I did not put a message in the beginning of the video, I'll definitely do that. This should be soft boiled. I completely, how am I, how did I miss that? I was just scrolling and I just realized this had a counter instead of soft boiled. It needs soft boiled. So we had to put that. Yeah, there we go. And so I'm going to get this set here. Let's put this right there. So look at this right here. We have the uh, Wormadam, Magnezone, Crawdont. Crawdont can knock off stuff. Magnezone can then proceed to trapping Skarmory, for instance, because maybe uh, maybe we get to knock off Skarmory Shedshell or something. Or if they have Skarmory Tangrowth and they don't want to get knocked off and they go Tangrowth, we sludge bomb that and get rid of it. So that could be also pretty useful. So I like these three so far. What else do I want to add though? Maybe like a Gliscor that's faster could be more annoying. To U-turn out a Crawdont and Magnezone can't dent it too well. So perhaps we could add like some kind of Ice Mon to help with flyings. I guess, well, we already have a ground. We already have a Weavile or like a Dark type, I mean. Hmm. Could potentially add... So, of course, you know, you also have to look out for adding a Stealth Rocker and a Defogger for the team. Rocks and Defog or Rocks and Spin, perhaps. Definitely essential. Especially since, oh, I guess the good thing about Wormadam is that you have that ground typing to help you not take 25% from Stealth Rocks. So you're only taking neutral damage from, from Stealth Rocks, which is actually a lot better with this ground type attached to it. So we already have a ground type. We don't need a ground type on this team. Let's see, uh, maybe some rocks. Stealth rocks. Could go... Maybe Blissey or something. I could also go... Hmm. Blissey would be able to sponge hits pretty well. Like with... Lottie and stuff like that. From Lottie's Draco Meteor, perhaps. Even though uh, <laughs> we have our nice... Wormadam plus one to sponge a Draco, but nah. Could go that. Could also go Clefable as a fairy type. May potentially work. Hmm. Maybe we go, uh. Well, like Ice Beam Clefable or something. Potentially could work. Or. Like Stealth Rocks. Unaware Leftovers. Yeah, could potentially go Ice Beam or Moonblast. Since we don't have Soft Boiled in BDSP, we could run... I guess we could also go Wish. Nah, this is kind of... Hmm. Not the biggest fan of that. What about, like... Does Azu get knockoff here? Unfortunately, not yet. I kind of like Azu as well. Like, Azu's pretty nice. What if I... Ooh, actually, what if I went... Tangrowth is the knockoff mon. And then Azu... For doing, like, some good damage and stuff. Actually, this this kind of is pretty nice. Because now we have um, a Pokemon that can just sponge. Hits really well. Let's, uh... Let's take this Tangrowth here. It's a good example. Nice Fizdef Tangrowth. And then Azu. I'll take the Bandit Azu set from my... From my Beautifly video. <laughs> so this is supporting Wormadam pretty well because we have Magnezone to trap 
Skarmory and stuff like that. Tangrowth can also apply some pressure to Gliscor because if we Giga Drain it enough, they can't Roost, otherwise they take super effective damage from Giga Drain. So that's an option. Knock Off gets rid of Shed Shells as well. And we have Bandit Azu, which can tweet KO things like Scizor, as well as apply more pressure on Gliscor, destroy Blissey for Wormadam. So it helps deal with a lot of the um, Wormadam uh, threats. Versus Dragonite. Actually, Dragonite's kind of a threat to Wormadam, right? Versus Dragonite, what can we keep? I feel like there's something we can keep that can help. We don't have a flying type yet. Let's see what we can get here. I guess... Uh, I mean, I guess maybe we could add it another ground, like Gliscor or something could work. As a... Um, as a defog mon or something or a rocker with uh with like ice fang could be pretty good Unwork clef actually does help versus dragonite though that's definitely um a thing right there put rocks on or something Let's see what our options are here we could probably do hmm could probably see like there are a lot of great rockers but I feel like Wormadam could have been a, a stealth rocker but I wanted to run it differently at least for now at least for now hmm yeah I guess it's kind of a tough choice here maybe I'll just put like Blissey for rocks anyways, just because it can sponge every hit. Just for now. It probably will change later on. But let me go ahead and not remember. Or not forget Soft Boiled. Seismic Toss, Thunder Wave. So like that perhaps could work. And then... Maybe something fast. Well, we have Scarf Magnezone. Ooh, what about a uh, Weavile? But then we need something that's flying in the air. Something that flies in the air. But I like, I really like Weavile actually, because like Magnezone traps Skarmory after Tangrowth knocks off, and then Weavile puts in the work. Weavile helps versus Gliscor, which Wormadam has trouble against, and then versus Scizor. I feel like this this one here could probably be like something different. Maybe like, um, I want a Stealth Rock Pokemon that can beat Scizor. Maybe Heatran would be kind of good too. Infernape Rocks is not bad, but it's all right. Let me get my Weavile set. I like this, uh, this one Weavile set that I use, I, I like it a lot. It's the, um... Four attack set. Although since I'm running Magnezone Tangrowth, I probably don't need Poison Jab for Azu. I could probably run Icicle Crash. This doesn't get triple axle here. I like Brick Break because it can help with screens teams as well as hit Magnezone Heatran and stuff like that too. Nice life orb set. I mean, I guess we have Tangrowth to sponge ground attacks. We do we even need a flying? Well, we need defog. We need defog for the team. Nice defog for the team. Kind of tempted to... Maybe switch some stuff up here. Like, we could probably put... I don't know, Togekiss as defogger and then... Some other rocker for the team. What if we did Togekiss... Crawdont instead of Weavile. And Blissey could work, maybe? But then we'd be... A little... I guess Gliscor would be a little more annoying. Ooh, this is like a puzzle. You know, you gotta put the pieces together, like I said. Hmm. Stealth Rocker. Well, I guess Mam Mamo Swine, actually... I, oh, how about this? How about instead of Weavile, we go Mamo? I don't mind actually having these two ground types together. 
If I go Stealth Rocks, let's get my Sash Mamoswine from my Draft Rig team. I like that. Yeah, this actually is not bad because now we have a, a Sash user so we can check stuff as well. And it's pretty helpful versus all kinds of Mons. We got Rocks. And then we need Defog, so maybe we go like... Instead of Blissey, perhaps Defog on... Something flying. Like that, for instance. Or Defog on... Oh, what if we went... We could go Defog Scarf Lottie, and then we can go Specs Magnezone. That could actually be kind of nice. If we go Specs on this, we go Tri Attack. And then maybe Scarf on this. With. I think we could go Draco Meteor, or we could go. Did I run a Scarf Lottie with before? I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah, I like this one. This is a pretty good one. Yeah. That seems like maybe it could be pretty decent. There's no Shadow Ball switching just yet, but however, there's only uh, Miss Magius in the tier, which you see sometimes, but yeah, a little less often, I guess. I could also go like um, something else in this slot, like Crowdon, or put a, nor a normal type or something on the team could work. So we have Defog. Because we have Ice Beam here, I could also just go um, back to Blissey here in this slot. Yeah, and we have the ground type still, right? So we could just do this and then have the sponge for literally everything. This could work. Yeah, I think I mean, I'll test it out, and of course, I'm probably going to switch some stuff up here and there, but you kind of get the idea. I'm thinking, as I'm building this team, I'm thinking of everything that Wormadam Sand needs help from, <laughs> and just trying to put on members that can help it out. And so, I think in this way, we can do it. So now, um, well, I, I, unless this is like sub Miss Magius or something, then maybe we run, uh, maybe we don't need Thunder Wave, maybe we run something over that, like, uh, I guess, I guess Shadow Ball is an option. Could work, potentially. There's no more Gengar or anything like that, but... I ran into a sub Miss Magius before. Still, it shouldn't be an issue, though. Uh, shouldn't be too much of an issue, I should say. So now we have Scarf, Specs, Band, Regenerator Mon with Knockoff. Nice, uh... So, like, Fizz Def, Spidef. So it's kind of a more, um... I would say balance slash leaning more towards bulky offense because there are a lot more offensive components, but we do have a balance component here. Uh, Draco switching in Blissey, Magnezone Steel type to trap, easily trap Scizor and do more damage to it, which is nice. Um, we have the nice, uh, yeah, Tangrowth for knockoff. This thing can destroy things. Uh, belly, uh, not Belly Drum, but Bandit Azu is just really, really hard hitting. And then Lottie, which I guess you could easily run Draco plus Psychic plus something else. But I like these four attacks here. Nice Scarf Defog as well can help us out and this can check things as well in the process but yeah I think I don't know if I missed anything here but it seems like a pretty solid team overall seems pretty solid enough because we have a little something for everything but I might I'll test it out. I'll probably find some issues of <laughs> some mods that are gonna be too dangerous or something but we'll see but not a bad not a bad start um, or not a bad start to this team and that's going to be it for my team building guide. I hope you all enjoyed. Wow, this is actually the, the longest video I've probably recorded <laughs> ever. But um, I try to put as much knowledge as I can into this video in the best way I can possible. And uh, just kind of showing you how I build teams and just the general stuff as well. Just to get, get you guys up to speed with uh, the knowledge so that hopefully you'll be able to start making your own teams and kind of... I guess learning through watching, because I know y'all have probably been watching me for a while, or some of y'all are maybe new as well and are trying to get into it. So hopefully this is a helpful guide for you all to build your own teams, and not just build your own teams, but also making a successful team, and a successful team around a Pokemon that you don't commonly see on the ladder. 
Like I'm hoping that, you know, you'll take this guide and, and kind of use it as a way to just go out of your comfort zone, find a Pokemon that you like, any kind of Pokemon uh, for that matter that uh, you may think, oh, this I don't th ever think I'm going to see this in the OU tier. I don't, think, I don't think I'm ever going to see this Pokemon used that much or something unique and just try to build around it and make it work really well. Kind of like I do for different videos, uh, for all my videos basically. Find a unique Pokemon and try to make it put in the work and make it put in the work. That's what I hope that you all can do after watching this one. But I do appreciate the support very much and I hope this video uh, found you well. And um, yeah, of course, uh, like I said in the beginning of the video, let me know in the comments uh, if you have any questions. Yeah, firstly, if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. If I missed anything, then I will um, address that as well. If you want in a reply, if you want to know something that I didn't explain uh, clearly enough, I will be more than happy to help you all learn and of course give you all my knowledge <laughs> as I have always been giving through each video. And also let me know in the comments as well, um, you know, your favorite Gen 9 uh, Pokemon Scarlet Violet starter. We saw all three of them recently and I, you know which one I like, I said in the beginning of the video, I tweeted it as well. Um, but yeah, I'm, uh, I'm excited for that, those games. Gen 9 is going to be fire. If there's some new mechanics and stuff, I'll definitely update this guide or I, I guess um, in a new team building guide if things change a lot. But I feel like this guide can be really used in like any kind of um, generation. Like the concepts and stuff are pretty easy to understand. Like the reason I've been like able to like shift from gen to like each gen and like do and still do well is because I just use like whatever I learned back in gen 5 when I started um, competitive. I've just been like kind of keeping that along with me and just like oh like this is new I'll just add it to what I know things like that and just building off of what I know nothing's really changed too drastically in terms of um, how the game is played competitively from a mindset point of view uh, for building teams in particular is what we're talking about that uh, that's definitely a, a skill that took me a while to um, to master I would say because team building I think is really difficult if you don't know what you're doing um, also, like just to make a team work, you really have to you really have to know like a, a good understanding of the mechanics of the game and um, what threats you need to deal with and everything like that. And just uh, I don't know, I, I guess technical stuff like that. But I used to steal teams. <laughs> I used to steal everybody's teams and use them. <laughs> I was like one of those people. But um, no shame, of course, no shame. I, I learned over time to um, to build my own teams, and now I'm just like I will use whatever Pokemon I want, and I will do well with it. That's what I hope you all can uh, can learn as well. If you don't know it already, that is. But um, yeah, I've uh, I've spoken too much. We're almost like we're pretty much at two hours now with this video. <laughs> nice two hour long video. Yeah, appreciate all the support from everybody, and I hope you all enjoyed. I'll see you all on the next video, and peace.